President Buhari in Benue debunks allegations of insensitivity to protection of lives and property. The way banking business has been designed, there is little room for financial inclusion. The banking sector comes under focus once again as a book on banking reform in Nigeria is presented to the public. Early childhood care and education, that's the commitment of the federal government as Nigeria marks 2018 Commonwealth Day. And from a legislative public hearing, the consensus is an independent body to deal exclusively with the prosecution of electoral offenders. Good evening. And so the trip down memory lane continues. I'm Nansel Nimiel. Welcome to NTA Network News. And as all you all know, it is all in the spirit of celebrating NTA at 40. Reading with me tonight is Elizabeth Omoruyi in Lagos. Caleb Gochin in Jos. While the Barbary Siedoma Nweke takes the news in Port Harcourt. President Muhammad Buhari has reassured Nigerians that his administration will not abdicate his responsibility in protecting lives and property across the country. Addressing the people of Benue State at a town hall meeting during a fact-finding visit, the president restated the federal government's resolve to bring to an end the rearing violent conflicts between farmers and herders. State House correspondent Adam Osambo reports. President Muhammad Buhari, accompanied by the Ministers of Defense, Information and Agriculture, the National Security Advisor and the Service Chiefs, was in Makurdi to not only find facts but also commiserate with the government and people of Benue State over the recent loss suffered as a result of the farmers' husband conflicts. At a town hall meeting well attended by political, community and religious leaders as well as other stakeholders, the president expressed heartfelt sympathy over their predicament arising from the recurring conflicts which he described as unfortunate, disturbing and counterproductive. I have uh, a nostalgic uh, experience of people from here that we went through all the turbulence that brought us up to this position. So there is no way I could deliberately overlook what is happening security-wise here and anywhere in Nigeria. As I said, and which you all know, our great party campaign on three things, security, economy, and corruption. I'm doing my best. The issue of security, President Buhari, however, insists, is everybody's business as government alone cannot effectively guarantee public security and therefore called for caution and restraint. What I, would, I feel is a question of you in your various constituencies to apply restraint. Myself and the governor and some of you who hold in public office will go. But the relationship between cattle herders and the farmers in Benue State will continue beyond us as it was before us. This is the reality of the situation. Nobody can question God. Why did God put us together? And it's fall on you as the leaders of the various communities you come from to keep on leading them and advising them to live peacefully. Governor Samuel Otom of Benue State assured President Buhari that no one is holding him responsible for the security challenge in the state as the conflict started well before his coming to power. He, however, expressed the belief that with the president's visit, the end of the recurring crisis is in sight. We believe that if this exercise, Ayeme Patuman, is 
upgraded to Operation Ayeme Patuma. The issue of armed men can be eliminated. Speakers at the event, including representatives of farmers and cattle breeders, spoke in the same vein, with most of them insisting that the open grazing prohibition and ranching establishment law is the best way forward. That if there is something that is dear to the heart of Benue people, it is that law. That law was made to the advantage of the farmers and also the headsmen. I know that we will not cry anymore now that you are here. You are welcome to Benue State, Mr. President. We see in you a man of honor, a man of integrity, a man of patriotism. As you leave for Abuja, we are going to smile. Benue is yours and yours to keep. The people assured the president of continued support and cooperation, but made a case for enhanced government presence in Benue, the food basket of the nation. From Makurdi, Adamusambu, NTA News. And the federal government says it has chosen negotiation rather than military option in rescuing the abducted schoolgirls from Chibok and Dapchi because Nigerians want them back alive. President Muhammadu Buhari made this known while exchanging views with United States Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. State House correspondent Adamo Sambo again reports. Nice to see you again. Thank you. President Muhammadu Buhari explained that Nigeria is working in concert with international organizations and negotiators to ensure that the girls in captivity are released unharmed by their captors. As he puts it, we are trying to be careful. It is better to get our daughters back alive. The president thanked the United States government for the assistance rendered Nigeria in the fight against insurgency, saying the Nigerian forces are good but need more equipment and training. He promised that the federal government will continue to do its best towards securing the country for efficient management, promising to be in Yobe State soon where Dapchi girls were abducted to sympathize with the people. President Buhari used the forum to restate his administration's commitment to free and fair polls in 2019. Later, at a joint media briefing with Nigeria's Foreign Affairs Minister, Geoffrey Onyama, Mr. Rex Stillerson commended the Nigerian leader for the giant strides being recorded in the fight against corruption. President Buhari's work has resonated across the continent with his recent recognition as the African Union's anti-corruption champion. We continue to encourage the Nigerian government to work with civic and community leaders to create a durable social, economic, and political infrastructure that supports lasting peace and development for the decades to come. The U.S. Secretary of State described Nigeria as a very important country to the United States and will continue to be supported in addressing prevailing challenges as well as transforming the economy. We collaborate to create a, a number of opportunities to increase trade and investment and to expand access to electricity, an essential component of both human and economic development. The recent kidnapping of more than 100 schoolgirls is heartbreaking. Nigeria has the United States' full support, and we are actively working with our partners here on other ways we can assist you in this fight. And in particular, as you know, the United States has agreed to sell to Nigeria the A-29, the Super Tokano uh, aircraft, which our aircraft and military believe will be a game changer. The Foreign Affairs Minister, Geoffrey Onyama, said, Mr. Rex Tillerson's visit shows the robust and highly beneficial relations between Nigeria and the United States, which he said can only get better. From the State House. The role of the banking sector in the promotion of the nation's economy, especially the federal government's programs on diversification of the economy, came to the fore at the presentation of a book, Banking Reform in Nigeria, The Law, the Prospects and the Challenges. Vice President Yemi Oshibanjo, at the occasion, says the only way banks in Nigeria could make significant impact in the lives of the citizenry is by providing single-digit loans to micro, small, and medium enterprises, and not by declaring huge profit at the end of every financial year. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports. It is a conversation which has been going on for a very long time, one which the author, from his wealth of experience, is making contributions on how to break the riddle of poverty in the land. As the vice president notes, industries are being frustrated out of business 
due to high interest rates on loans and the people, he says, are puzzled by the huge profit coming in for the banks. And the truth is that the way banking business has been designed, there is little room for financial inclusion. There is little room for those who cannot afford to pay the kinds of charges that banks have to make. Let me quickly add that this is not necessarily the fault of the banks alone. We run an economic system that essentially favors the strong and excludes the weak. It has been our task as a government to turn that around. First by a social investment program, which provides in the budget 500 billion, and of course a more aggressive financial inclusion strategy. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo is also of the view that the central bank should be in total control, monitoring the activities of the banks and taking actions where necessary. So many concerns are raised on the banking system in Nigeria and finding solutions to those questions as hoped could lead to a buoyant economy. What is it that we can do as a nation to lower the cost of funds in Nigeria? so that our young men, young women, entrepreneurs can risk taking money from our financial institutions in order to realize their dreams. Why is banking in Nigeria different from what obtains outside this country? Why? The book is the academic contribution of Honorable Bote Ayorinde, member of the Technical Committee on Recession to the nation's economic reform. From the International Conference Center, Abuja, Jude Onifati, NT News. And in view of the challenges of banking and financing, banking reform, the law, the prospects, and the challenges is expected to help build a responsive and vibrant sector in the country. Muplang Dakok tells us more. Banking has been in the spotlight in Nigeria and Africa since the economic meltdown some decades ago. Nigerians in particular save money in banks at single digit interest but have to get loans for their businesses at double digit interest. It is this worrisome situation among others that the 591 page book Banking Reform in Nigeria, the law, the prospects and the challenges hopes to address. To be held accountable for the constitutional assignment is to take credit for the well-being of our people and take the full blame for the contrary. Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefile, legislators and stakeholders in the banking industry agree that a reformed banking industry would encourage production over marketing, lend at affordable interest rate, and reduce non-performing loans. I can assure that we will take the book home and read it and think of how we can uh, take some of the good points in it and then deliver the best in terms of banking in Nigeria to Nigerians. Banking sector exposure to the real sector is also not impactful. Loans, the top 100 customers are responsible for 71% of the total loans and credit in the country. So there's a concentration of credit. Reviewers say when properly implemented, the recommendations in the book will help transform the banking industry in Nigeria. Muplang Dakok, NTA News. You're watching NTA Network News. We'll now take a short break to bring you some messages. The news returns shortly. Stay with us. Thousand percent bonus for reactivating your MTN SIM. That's right. If you haven't used your MTN SIM for 45 days or more, recharge now and get 2,000% bonus. That's right, 2,000% bonus for your first recharge of every month. Oh. 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 
Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, brings a new lease of life to Nigeria SMEs. SON has put a greater premium on developing standards to improve made in Nigeria products for export. We have developed more standards for products like Sesame, Coco, Gary, and more, courtesy of our accredited state-of-the-art laboratories. In keeping with the federal government's ease of doing business, SON has simplified its processes and turned around time for SONCAP, MANCAP, and other certification processes. SON has intensified market sales surveillance, raids, and seizures to reduce substandard products in circulation, and offenders shall be prosecuted. Join SON in reading our nation of substandard products. If you see something, say something. Standards Organization of Nigeria, improving lives through standards. The Minister of Transportation, Right Honorable Chibike Ratimi Amechi, invites stakeholders in the transportation, aviation, agriculture, water resources management, marine, oil and gas, health, construction, tourism, environment, power, commerce, disaster management, telecommunications, sports, etc. to the public presentation of the 2018 Seasonal Rainfall Prediction theme, Seasonal Climate Prediction for Sustainable Development by Senator Hadi Sirika, Minister of State, Aviation. Date, Tuesday, 13th March, 2018. Venue, Ladi Wali Hall, Sheraton Hotel and Towers, Abuja. Time, 9 a.m. Prompt, Professor Sani Abubakar Marshi, DG and CEO, Nigerian Meteorological Agency. Announce. Welcome to the world of Binani Printing Press, a leading printing company in West Africa with state-of-the-art printing machines. We offer solutions to all your printing needs with speed, quality, and timely delivery to customer satisfaction. Binani Printing Press offers a wide range of services, both in commercial and security printing. Our operational capabilities compete favorably with any international printing firm in terms of technology, quality, and efficiency. Our capacity and efficiency defines us as the largest press in West Africa. Make it to Binani Printing Press today for your world-class printing. We are located at Plot A00 Stroke 1153, Central Business District, Abuja. Call us on 706 819 0807-807-3934 Email printing at binani.com Website www.binaniprintingpress.com Binani Printing Press The biggest printing press in West Africa I need a product that I can really trust to restore my skin's natural glow Nivea Natural Fairness Body Lotion containing unique berry extracts and UV protection to restore your natural glow and care for your skin. Hello, here to pick up your sister. Mommy! Mommy? Wow, such beautiful glowing skin. Reveal your natural glow with Natural Fairness Body Lotion from Nivea. Sabi, we gonna plan well, well. Learn correct information about different kind of family planning method. Then they are safe and they work well. Up. You and your partner feel plan when in a light to bump the king. Turn that well. Make you yearn with your partner. Make them sabi say you support modern family planning. Oh yeah, waka go color be the better one. We go fit your body today. Cause say we get one work correct for you and your partner. Sabi the correct thing where family planning they do. Follow talk, talk family planning with, with your, your partner. partner. Waka go do family planning. Get it together. Get it together. Join him plan your family. For tomorrow we better. Now the Federal Ministry of Health they bring on this get it together Tori. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect 
diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Let Malta goodness feel your greatness. Let's go. Welcome back. The establishment of the National Electoral Offences Commission as an independent body that will deal exclusively with prosecution of electoral offenders has been advocated. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegunloye reports that this was the consensus at a public hearing convened by the Joint Senate Committee on INEC and Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters. Political pundits believe that the age-long challenges of electoral offences and impunity of perpetrators still remains, in spite of the various innovations introduced in the 2015 general elections. And with the 2019 general elections fast approaching and the desire to build on the successes of 2015, the Joint Senate Committees on INEC and Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters held this public hearing to establish the National Electoral Offences Commission. Certainly, over the years, statistics shows that various offences and crime orchestrated by numerous politicians <laughs> has cast shadows over the electoral process. The INEC cannot be a complainant and a prosecutor in matters of electoral offences. The proposed commission will take on that role. It represents a turning point away from the history of badly conducted elections. INEC has itself admitted it lacks the wherewithal to cleanse the system, hence its inability or failure to prosecute 1% of the 870,000 electoral offences allegedly committed during the 2011 general elections. The consideration and passage of this bill, in a sense, is long overdue. Given the advocacy by two previous committees set up by the government, this impunity, if it is not, Checked, it really allows for uh, boldness for it to continue. Observations were made in the composition of the 17-member board as calls were made for it to be comprised of wholly independent members and not ex-officials, as well as other issues including punishments for offenders and provisions for persons with disabilities. would like to see a commission that is not manipulated or manipulatable. The Joint Committee will present findings to plenary ahead of passage and transmission to the President for assent from the National Assembly, Dennis Adigunloye, NT News. Though states remain the key actors in the fight against terrorism, the growing pressure for heightened international cooperation has become critical to the development of effective anti-terrorism measures. Olajide Bello reports that this was brought to the fore by the former commander of the Sri Lankan Navy, Vice Admiral Travis Sinha, at a lecture to the Block 7 Corps' 26 participants of the National Defence College. The global challenges facing the international community transcend state capabilities to deal with effectively as autonomous entities. Increased mobility of terrorists across borders, acquire resources in numerous states, and access advanced communication system makes it asymmetric in nature. Therefore, to suppress terrorism, states need to put aside political differences and combat threats as one cohesive force with global security in mind. Terrorists have gone to the stage where the military itself has to get involved and not just paramilitaries. The military gets involved in the fight. And today, we are fighting a fourth generation war against non-state actors. So uh, the conventional 
war fighter or the state military itself has to start rewriting its doctrine to cater to the new form of war. In the case of terrorism, an insurgency will most equally be prepared to adopt unconventional approach, both in tactics and in weaponry within the limits of acceptable norms and practices. Upgrade of weapons and platform inventory, adequate and up-to-date training, as well as tactical and strategic thinking were identified as pivotal to successful conduct of counter-insurgent operations. In Abuja, Olajide, Bello, NTA News. And as Nigeria joins 52 other member countries to celebrate the 2018 Commonwealth Day, the federal government says it remains committed to developing and strengthening its human capital by institutionalizing early childhood care and ed education. Olayin Kaojo reports that the Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, gave this assurance in Abuja. Left every second Monday of March every year, Commonwealth Day brings together people from countries in Africa, Europe, the Caribbean, America, Asia and the Pacific. Building upon previous theme, the 2018 theme explores how Commonwealth can address global challenges and create a better future for more than 2.4 billion people, accounting for 30% of the world's population through sustainability, safety, prosperity and fairness, particularly for young people. In a changing world to remain relevant to the aspiration of its citizens, the Commonwealth needs to change too. With the belief that when we learn from others through exchange of ideas, we grow in understanding and work more collaboratively towards a common future. Minister of Education says Nigeria is working with the Commonwealth of Learning to mainstream child-friendly school models. Provision of quality education goes beyond teaching methods and learning outcomes. Our two ministries need to collaborate to encourage sports-based scholarship. This year's Commonwealth Day precedes the 2018 Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting to take place between April 16 and 20 in London. In Abuja, online Kauju, NTA News. And still on education, teachers across Nigeria are to benefit from special training to address pressing issues concerning revamping the education sector in a series of workshops organized by the National Teachers Institute. Adiza Najaatu Tijani reports. Challenges in Nigeria's education sector, aggravated by ongoing conflict in the Northeast and other parts of the country, low teachers' income, shortage of skilled teachers, and poor training are believed to have caused setbacks in the sector. All these are not lost on the stakeholders. They also recognize the need for teachers to be treated with dignity and assisted to be more productive. The National Teachers Institute is therefore seeking to address these issues in the workshops aimed at promoting lifelong learning opportunities for all, as stated in the Sustainable Development Goals. The 2017 edition of the workshop is unique in many respects. First, this year, there are five distinct components of the workshop which address topical issues concerning education system in the country. The workshops as we run off Friday 16th of March 2017 will dwell on four thematic areas of concern. Effective classroom management skills, language communication skills, basic classroom teaching methods through techniques, as well as the information communication technology ICT. Also want them to be competitive enough to win back the lost confidence and glory of public schools in the country. 3,700 teachers across the 36 states and federal capital territory will receive training in basic classroom methods, digital literacy, HIV awareness, among other key education components. In Abuja, Hadiza Najatu Tijani, NTA News. Now, time to join Elizabeth for more on NTA Network News. Elizabeth. Hello, Nancel. It's good to see you again and a warm welcome to Lagos. 
After a series of engagements, complaints and heated debates at various fora over the newly renewed land use charge in Lagos State, Governor Akumi Ambode says the government is open to further discussion with stakeholders in estate management, property owners and the organized private sector to address grey areas in the law. The governor stated this while answering questions from journalists in Lagos. Musa Tolia reports. Governor Akumi Ambode said the land use charge law is not meant to bring untold hardship on Lagos residents, but to harmonize the tenement rates, grand rent, and neighborhood improvement levy in the state. He, however, stressed that the state government is not unmindful of the agitations in various quarters over the land use charge. Governor Ambode therefore assured Lagos residents and the organized private sector that the complaints generated by the law will be addressed. Governance is about people, it's about what they want. When I say I want dialogue, I really mean it, and I'm ready to respond to that. By the end of this week, we should be able to come out with something positive, positive that actually ameliorates the, 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 the issues being raised by concerned stakeholders. Meanwhile, the Lagos State Commissioner of Police, Imoemi Edgar, has invited members of the Nigeria Bar Association Ikeja branch to a roundtable discussion to work out modalities on the proposed protest by the MBA over the land use charge law. We intend to ensure that the routes that they have uh, followed are not routes where uh, the protest can be hijacked, where security of the state can be compromised. Stakeholders in property management and the organized private sector have consistently requested that the implementation of the new land use charge be put on hold until the gray areas in the law are sorted out. In Lagos, Musa Toliat, NTA News. This year's International Women's Day provided a platform for organizations to raise awareness on the contributions of the women folk to growth and development of the country. In Gobin, the Gombe State Capital, the Bardic Campaign Organization marked the day in a special event that brought to the fore women's role in capital development in Nigeria. Abrahman Ali has the details. The day set aside by the United Nations is to celebrate women all over the world by raising awareness on issues concerning the women. The celebration of the International Women's Day by the Dumberde Campaign Organization in Gombe focused attention on the participation of women in the political process of Nigeria, the plight of women in conflict areas, as well as the support they need to enable them contribute to the growth and development of the society. Dumberde was concerned about the predicaments of the abducted Chibok and Dabchi school girls, where he asked for special prayers for their rescue, calling for empowerment of the women folk. Unless we empower our women, unless we provide them with equal opportunities as we do like men, both our women and our children and the girls, we should give them equal opportunity as we do our men and our boys, we will not be able to progress as a people. Women from the 11 local government areas of Gombe State attended the celebration under the platform of the All Progressive Congress. They discussed their common problems with one voice appealing for support to enable them make significant impact on the political landscape of their society, calling for peaceful coexistence as they are always the worst hit in any conflict. The Lombardi campaign organization distributed gifts of materials to the women and cash promising them better empowerment and involvement in governance should his political dream come true in 2019. In Gombe, Abdrahman Aliu, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. Time now to take some messages. More reports when we return. Stay with us. The Nigeria Police Force has commenced the disarmament and recovery of prohibited firearms, ammunition and weapons in possession of all suspected militias, armed herdsmen and farmers, bandits, vigilante groups, neighborhood watch and other groups, individuals or bodies. The range of firearms include artillery, apparatus for the discharge of any explosives of gas diffusing projectile, rocket weapons, bombs and grenades, machine guns and machine pistols, all kinds of military rifles, revolvers and pistols, whether rifled or unrifled, all 
all categories of pump action guns and any other firearm or lethal weapon fabricated to kill. Members of the public are hereby warned and given 21 days starting from the 22nd of February 2018 to surrender them to the Commissioner of Police in the state they are domiciled. Members of the public who notice anyone bearing, possessing or in custody of any kind of firearm should report such to the DIG operations and others listed below. This message is from the Force Public Relations Department. Who wants to answer? Mary? Mary has a toothache. Oh, I see. And who knows why? Because her tooth is too big. No. It might be a hole in her tooth called a cavity. That's why I brush twice a day using Colgate. Imagine this is your tooth and these are food acids that cause cavities. Colgate with calcium and fluoride helps prevent cavities for maximum cavity protection. And now available in a fresh new icy mint gel. Wow. Kende suffers from indigestion. His twin Taiyi suffers from heartburn. Sometimes it's the other way around, or both. That's why they use Gaviscon Double Action. It soothes within three minutes and lasts for up to four hours. For double relief from heartburn and indigestion, Gaviscon Double Action. Sensitivity is a short pain, which occurs when teeth are exposed to hot, cold, or acidic. Things. Cold water from the fridge would, would trigger off sensitivity. A lot of people would accept anyway and just grin and bear the pain. What I would say to the patient is switch to Sensodyne, make it your daily toothpaste. Over a period of time would reduce tooth sensitivity. And a lot of them come back to, tell, you know, to thank me, to say that, wow, it's just something so simple. It adds the sparkle back into their life. From our wonderful family, meet Patty for celebrating the high points of life with friends. And then there's me, Jolly Jolly, bringing nourishment to every gathering. Packed with healthy nutrition, nourishing vitamins, power of protein, strength of calcium, revitalizing energy. Hollandia yogurt is bursting with goodness inside and out. Hollandia yogurt, it's all good. Thank you, honey, for being such a blessing to me and our family. Mama, happy you, Mama, happy Good always happens with Gino. The family's always happy with Gino. The times we have here, good moments we share. Gino truly cares. John is so cranky with this rash. It's a main baby suffering from diaper rash, especially when using cloth or low quality diaper instead of pampers. But money is so tight. It's true, but it's such a waste to spend so much on products to clear diaper rash rather than pampers with built in lotion that helps prevent rash and keeps baby dry all night long. Even in tough times, our babies must come first. Nigerian pampers, number one choice of pediatricians. Today, Ariel will show you how to save more in these tough times. Wifey's powder, it's pretty good and money's tight. But Ariel gives better cleaning with less powder. Impossible. Come with me. Spaghetti sauce, chocolate drink. For these tough stains, I'll need one, two, and just one handful of Ariel. New Ariel gives better stain removal with less powder. That's real savings. Ariel removes tough stains better in one wash. When you wake up in the morning before you start your day, breakfast time is Kela's time. For work and for play, for a great start to your day, breakfast time is Kela's time. We always start our day with a nourishing Kellogg's breakfast, powered with the goodness of grains and 11 essential vitamins and minerals. Kellogg's makes a great tasting breakfast for all of us. So in our family, breakfast time is Kellogg's time. So I eat Kellogg's for breakfast. It keeps me full of energy. It's tasty and nutritious. At school works, it's so easy. Kellogg's every day. Breakfast time is Kellogg's time. Breakfast is Kellogg's. So give your family a tasty, nutritious breakfast of Kellogg's today. Now also available at just 15 Naira. Breakfast time is Kellogg's time. And now to business news.
The Central Bank of Nigeria injects additional $210 million into the interbank foreign exchange market. And the Naira continues to stabilize at 360 Naira to the dollar at the Bureau de Change segment of the market on Monday. For more in the business world, here is Vivian Idekpefo. Hello and welcome to Business News. President Muhammad Buhari has approved an amendment to the exercise duty rates for alcohol, beverages and tobacco with effect from the 4th of June 2018. The new exercise duty regimes are spread over a three-year period from 2018 to 2020 in order to moderate the impact on prices of the products. The new exercise duty regimes follows an all-inclusive stakeholder engagement by the Tariff Technical Committee of the Federal Ministry of Finance with key industry stakeholders. Meanwhile, Nigeria's foreign reserves hit $46 billion on Friday, March 9, 2018, in a release by the Acting Director Corporate Communications, Mr. Isaac Okorafo. The Apex Bank says the reserves grew by about $3.2 billion between February and March 2018. The reserves in January stood at $39.3 billion, then rose to $42.8 billion in February before hitting the new high of $46 billion. Now to the capital market where equities seem to be on a negative trajectory. The all-share index depreciated by 0.26% to close at 43,056.51 basis points. 831 million shares were traded in 5,651 deals worth 10 billion naira. Market capitalization closed at 15 trillion naira. Total led the gainers chart, Unilever led the pack of losers, while FBN Holdings, Zenith Bank and Japol Oil ended the day as the most traded stocks. That's it from this end. The rest of the bulletin continues. In the meantime, the Nigerian Communications Commission has warned telecom service providers against tendencies that will exploit consumers. Director, Consumer Affairs, Abdullahi Meikano, made this known at the 92nd edition of the Consumer Outreach Program held at Ikodekbene, Akwaibom State. Susan Asuko has the details. The Consumer Outreach Program is put together to address the challenges faced by network consumers. Director, Consumer Affairs Bureau, Nigerian Communication Commission, was represented by Deputy Director, Consumer Affairs Bureau, Alhaji Ismaila Dedigba, noted that consumer education and information are some of the mechanisms that can guarantee consumers' protection. The forum seeks to educate consumers and other stakeholders on contemporary issues generating interest in the industry have also served as a feedback mechanism for the Commission. In a paper talked, a knowledgeable, informed and educated consumer is an empowered and protected consumer. Mr. Ayola Oke emphasized the need for service providers to educate consumers on the terms and conditions for enjoying certain services and the fees are credible, while Mr. Ruben Mwaka hinted on the many options available for consumers to seek redress. For any for which the service provider is unable to resolve whatever it is, always call C2. It is so free and it is in all the networks. From Ikorek Bene local government area, Susan Asukwa, NTA News. And Caleb is standing by with stories trending in our Just Network Center. Caleb? Thank you, Nansel. Good to see you. The Plateau State House of Assembly has passed a vote of confidence on Governor Simon Lalong and the APC-led administration for a second term in office. The governor, who received the letter of resolution handed over by the Speaker of the House, Peter Azi, appreciated the trust placed on him and the APC administration, promising to relay their message to the president. Paul Dama reports. 
Led by the Speaker, Mr. Peter Azi, members of the ruling APC in the House of Assembly met with Governor Simon Lalong, his Deputy Professor Sonny Children, former Deputy Governor Pauline Tallon, and some members of the EXCO at the Government House Little Rayfield, where the Speaker explained that the resolution was arrived at during plenary on the 27th of February 2018. Not quite a decision of the APC alone. All action of the preliminary section is this action of the Plateau State House of Assembly. Governor Simon Lalong said he has also, on several occasions, passed a vote of confidence on members of the House of Assembly as the executive and the legislature have been partners in progress. He noted that without this synergy, there will be no meaningful development in the state. There is no way we would have succeeded in Plateau if we didn't have good guidance from a leader like him. And I want to guarantee that uh, as soon as he gives the directive, I will comply with the own directive. The governor said he will need time to consult with the president before he makes a declaration. In Joss, Paul Dama, NTA News. Issues that border on the broadcast industry, their challenges and ways forward were discussed at a meeting of the Broadcasting Orga Organization of Nigeria, born North Central Zone in Jos. Renret Lord has the details. Aside issues of common interest, the heads of the different media organizations at the meeting dwelt on Bond's stand on how to package news reports during crisis situations, elections and sanctions to be meted out on airing organizations. Particularly disturbing to the group were matters of sanctions by Bonn and advertisements which to them is not evenly distributed in the country. Chairperson of the meeting and the chairman of Unity FM speak on resolutions of the meeting. You can agree with me that this is a trying period for the broadcasters and the nation as a whole. So in our own small way, how do we contribute? Those are the issues that we have basically discussed and the way forward. The NBC is our regulator. It licenses us. Uh, if the only area of uh, conflict we have is this um, blatant uh, penalty that are being issued to us without recourse to the principles of uh, fair hearing. There were other inputs from members on the needs for training for upcoming journalists in the media circle. This is the first zonal meeting in JOS of the North Central Zone. In JOS, Rinred Lot, NTA News. And JOS is done. Let's continue with Nansel in Abuja. Thank you very much, Caleb. And from JOS, we're crossing over now to Port Harcourt for more on the news with Dibabari. Dibabari? Good evening, Nansel, and welcome to Port Harcourt. The mandate of the Nigerian Navy to reduce economic sabotage with the Nigerian water boundaries has yielded another achievement with the arrest of a vessel IMO San Padre P-10 and 16 Ukrainians engaged in illegal oil transactions in the Niger Delta region. Robin Sinjara Tide reports that the vessel and the crew members were handed over to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, for further investigation. The sabotage of Nigeria economy through illegal oil dealings have been a major concern for the present leadership of the Nigerian Navy to address. The effort of the Navy at the forward operating naval base Boni in River State led to the arrest of the vessel in January 23, 2018. According to the commanding officer, Captain Suleiman Olorundare, the vessel was arrested offshore around Odudu oil field in River State, and all the crew members are from Ukraine. He further revealed that the vessel is loaded with about 5,000 metric ton of AGO, while Blue Sea Maritime serves as the Nigerian agent of the vessel. The chief of naval staff has given us the mandate against all form of criminality within our maritime environment. And that mandate, we are determined to implement it to the latter. After taking over the vessel and the crew, officials of the EFCC promised that the agency will carry out proper investigation for necessary prosecution. From Bonnie in River State, Robinson Delateide, NTA News. 
The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria has given all intending pilgrims from the South, South and South East regions up to March 31st, 2018 to pay up their fare in line with the Saudi Arabia's government's new guideline for this year's pilgrimage to Mecca, the Holy Land. National Chairman of the Commission, represented by Executive Commissioner Al-Haji Yusuf Ibrahim, disclosed this at a meeting with the executive members of the various Hajj commissions in the two regions held in Port Harcourt. Kingsley Abadji reports. A forum was put together by the authorities of the National Hajj Commission to enlighten leaders of the various Hajj commissions in the South, South and South East states. Top on the agenda is to bring to the notice of the Muslim Umar in the states the need for them to do their biometrics and new requirements mandatory for the 2018 Hajj operations at the three biometric registration centers located in Lagos, Abuja and Kano. This year anybody that wants to perform Hajj must have his fingerprint biometric and at the same time because of the closeness of Arafadi. The Saudi has pegged the closing date of, uh, of Hajj to after Shaban, which is May. So we want any, any intending pilgrims to pay their money as soon as possible so that their fingerprint can be captured, so that they can possess their document and get ready to perform Hajj for 2018. The meeting was also a platform for the Muslim Ummah to express their concerns, especially for those within this region who are having some challenges of sponsorship in Port Harcourt. Kingsley Amadri, NTA News. And that does it from Port Harcourt. It's back to Namsel. Thank you, Dibabari. This is NTA Network News. We take another break. And after that, it'll be sports and more. Don't you. Three Crowns Milk is low in cholesterol and endorsed by the Nigerian Heart Foundation. Three crowns milk, healthy moms, happy families. <clears throat> Sore throats, it's often caused by bacteria and viruses. Feels like they're having a party. You need Strepsils. It soothes the pain, plus it fights the germs with two germ-killing actives. Double power in one lozenge. Bye-bye, sore throat. Take Strepsils. The winning energy and great Milo taste, now ready to go. Milo! The winning energy and great Milo taste, now ready to go. Milo! The winning energy and great Milo taste, now ready to go. Milo! Hurry up, you're going to be late for school. What's wrong? I forgot my lunchbox at home. Wanna share mine? My mom used bummer mayonnaise. What's wrong? I forgot my lunchbox again. You got your mine. What's your excuse? Bama Mayonnaise makes it better. Hey, great news. Oral-B has just been voted Kudos number one quality toothpaste of 2017 by you. So even though times are hard, as a mother, you know that Oral-B is good for your family's oral health because they deserve the best. It's great value because it protects you against tooth holes and gum problems that can lead to tooth loss. It strengthens your family's teeth and gives them all-round protection. So remember, protect their future. Oral B for healthier and stronger teeth in one week. Your perfect family is under threat by germs. Infectious diseases are now the world's biggest killer of adults and children. Every day, 16,000 children under the ages of 5 and thousands of adults die from infectious diseases. These infectious diseases are caused by germs. They are everywhere. An average human being comes in contact with over 1 million germs daily. In unclean water, dirty surfaces, in the toilet, on cuts and wounds, on your clothes, germs can cause deadly diseases like typhoid, diarrhea, flu, 
and cough to protect your family from germs. Use the power of Dettos One Cap Full for surface cleaning in your bathing water, in your laundry water, for first aid to protect your family from up to 100 illness causing germs. Be Dettos Sure. Endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. With deep sense of loss and gratitude to God for a life well lived, the Shagaya family announces the passage of its patriarch, Senator General Dr. John Nanzib Shagaya, OFR, Damburam Langtang. He is survived by five children, nine grandchildren, two sisters, and numerous cousins, nephews, and nieces. Burial events are as follows. 15th March 2018 at 4.30 p.m. Service of songs at the Shagaya family residence, number four, Shagaya Place, Golden Bay's Jaws. 16th March 2018 at 10 a.m. Funeral service at Koking Central, Langtang. Followed by internment at the Kuzwang family burial ground, Langtang, at 2 p.m. Reception comes up the same day at the Shagaya family residence corner, John Shagaya and Joe Garba Streets, respectively, Langtang, at 3.30 p.m. Announcer, Colonel Nansak Shagaya. In our sports, the 2018 Flag Officer Commanding Western Naval Command Golf and Professional Tournament ends with an appeal to key players to work together and build more golf courses to help develop the sport. As the third IGP Professional Boxing Tournament also ends in Lagos. Adeola Omokivie has details on our sports update. <laughs>